right. So, D is a diagonal matrix, right, where the diagonal entries are your eigenvalues if ideally uh, or otherwise known as singular values, right. V is a hmm? V is a P cross P matrix which uh, has your Eigen vectors and U is the n cross p matrix which typically spans your column space as x, the same column space as x, okay. So, this is essentially your uh, singular value decomposition that we talk about. So, So, if you if you look at singular value decomposition or uh, uh, what is called the principal component analysis literature, you will find the following. You will find that they will talk about the covariance matrix S, yes. okay. What is the covariance matrix? Okay. So, it is a covariance matrix. This is essentially, if you think of whatever we have been doing so far, what would be this? Centered, right? It is centered. So, I take the centered data, okay, then this becomes this. Right? So, x trans, uh, then what I do is, I find the Eigen decomposition of that. I, I find the Eigen decomposition of the covariance matrix, right? So I can essentially write this as. Oh. So the same V and D that I wrote here, assuming this was. Okay. So if I take X C. So basically I am going to get the same thing, right. So it is essentially like doing singular value decomposition, right and retrieving the V matrix, right. I am essentially taking the X transpose X which is the covariance matrix of the centered data, okay and I am finding the eigenvalue decomposition of that, okay. So D squared would be the eigenvectors of X transpose X. So this is standard stuff you should know. Okay. So, the columns of So, they are called the principal component directions of x. So, there are a couple of uh, nice things about the principal uh, component directions. So, we will talk about just one. Um, so, I will actually come back to PCA uh, slightly later, right, when I talk more about uh, generally about feature selection, not just in the context of regression, but when I talk generally about feature selection, I will come back to PCA and tell you, at least show you why PCA is good, right. Now, I will just tell you why PCA is good. Okay, we will come back later and then I will show you why. PCA is good, right. So, suppose I take, right. so where V1 is the Eigen vector corresponding to the first Eigen value, right, Eigen vector corresponding to the first Eigen value. So, essentially what this means is I am projecting my data x on the first Eigen vector direction, okay. So, the resulting vector z1, okay, will have the highest variance okay among all possible directions in which i can project x right so what does that mean right 
suppose this is x okay this is not x and y okay so it's a two dimensional x okay this is x now i am claiming that v1 will be such that when i project x on to v1 i'll have the maximum variance right so in this case it will be some direction like this okay and projecting x on to this essentially means that So you can see that the data is pretty spread out. It goes from here to here. Right? On the other hand, if I had taken a direction, let's say that looks like that. Right? So if I look at projection of the data, right? So you can look at the spread. It's a lot lesser in that direction okay, than in the original direction I did the projection. I know it looks pretty confusing to look at, but uh, people can get my point, right? Right. So in the original direction, that way, the data was a lot more spread out, as opposed to this direction where the data is a lot more compact when I project it onto that direction. So that's essentially what I'm saying. So Z1, right, is essentially the projected data onto that direction on onto X. Right. So Z1 actually has a highest variance among all the directions in which I can project the data, right? And uh, consequently, you can also show things like if I'm looking to reconstruct the data, original data, and I say that you can only give me one coordinate, right? So you have to summarize the data in a single coordinate, okay? And now I'm going to measure the data measure the error in reconstruction right if you looked at it so the error in reconstruction would have been these bars that i did the projection over right that would be the error in reconstruction so i have the original data so that is the data so now i'll give you this coordinates okay now i have to reconstruct the data right so essentially this will be the errors right so the principal the the, the first principal component direction the first principal component direction is the one that has the smallest smallest reconstruction error the first uh, principal component direction will be the one that has the smallest reconstruction error so we can show a lot of nice properties about this so i'll actually come back and uh, do this uh, later uh, when we talk about uh, general feature selection okay but here you can see the first thing you can see what each one right v1 to vp will be orthogonal right so i have gotten my orthogonal directions right and the thing to notice is a lot of the variation in the data is explained by v1 v1 has the maximum variance likewise you take out v1 right you take out v1 so now what you have your data lies in some kind of a t minus 1 dimensional space right and the direction in that di space which has the highest variance is v2 it turns out that so v1 has the highest variance over the all data so in this space orthogonal to v1 v2 has the highest variance right in the space orthogonal to v1 and v2 v3 will have the highest variance and so on and so forth right so essentially now what you can do is hey i'm going to take all this directions one at a time right and i'll do my regression right because each is orthogonal i can independently do the regression i can add the outputs right i can keep adding the dimensions until my residual becomes small enough right does that make sense so i'll just keep adding this orthogonal dimensions until my residual becomes small enough at that point i stop so this is essentially the idea behind
So remember we are working with the centered data right, so you automatically add in your intercept which is y bar, the coefficient is y bar right and then your uh, if you if you choose to take the first m principal components okay your thing will be theta m z m where z m is given by this right, right and theta m is essentially regressing y on z m right, so that is a univariate regression expression you know that well now. So this gives you the, uh, the principal component uh, regression fit. So one of the drawbacks of uh, doing principal component regression is that I am only looking at the data, the input right, I am not looking at the output. So it could very well be that once I consider what the output is right, I might want to change the directions a little bit right. So I can give you an example, it is easier for me to draw if I think of uh, classification. Let us say this is the data and what would be the principal component direction you want to choose, something like this right, so that would be the ideal direction that you would want to choose okay. So now what will happen, the data will get will get projected like this right, but suppose I tell you that, suppose I tell you that. That these three were in a different class right, if you want to think of it in terms of regression let us assume that these three have an output of minus 1 and these four have an output of plus 1 okay. Now if you think of this direction, so the plus 1 and minus 1s are hopelessly mixed up right, the plus 1 and minus 1s are hopelessly mixed up right, so I cannot, I cannot draw give a smooth prediction of which will be plus 1 which will be minus 1. On the other hand if you project onto a direction like this right, the variance is small right, I agree right, the variance is much smaller but if you think about it, so all the minus 1s go to one side right, all the plus 1s go to one side, so now if I want to do a prediction on this, so it will be like okay this is, this side is minus 1 and that side is plus 1, I can essentially do a fit like this which will give me a lot lesser error than the other case. Right, so so in in cases where you are having an output that is specified for you already, it might be beneficial to look at the output also when trying to derive directions. Right, as opposed to just looking at the input data. Right, so in classification, you can see right. In classification, this will be say class one, this will be class two, and having this direction allows you to have a separating surface somewhere here. Right, we talked about uh, classification in the first class right, so just having a separating surface here will be great. But in this case if I am projecting on this direction coming up with a linear separating surface is going to be hard, everything gets completely mixed up. Okay. 